This video will give an overview on the Eagle Eye wireless start system. And we'll go through the connections and we'll talk about some troubleshooting items along the way. This is a uh, transmitter that's a one piece unit. It doesn't have an extension of a microphone that plugs into the base unit. Um, it's a one uh, unit uh, convenient um, way to pass it back and forth between a couple of different starters. And it's a very simple, simple system. Let's go through it. The on button shows a power light. We have a data light too that lights up when it's triggered. We have an open mic port, nothing goes into it. The concussion and sound of the gun sets off a sensor that wirelessly transmits it to the, the uh, receiver. This mic port can take a external um, electronic starting device, but how how that actually sounds depends on the investment that you put into a speaker system, but the vast majority of users of this will use it with an open, with an open mic port. It's got an antenna, we wanna make sure that's tight. It's uh, straight up and down, it is not angled, it is not pointed, it is straight up and down. This unit should be worn on the thumb of the starting hand of the starter in this relationship, so that it's in close proximity to the gun. Issues can be avoided if your starter holds it out here, that's a bit risky. And certainly we don't want it to be attached to a ladder stand or, or worn on a belt or in a pocket. It really needs to have that close proximity to the starting gun. It has a nine volt battery in the back, take the cover off. There's also a, a cover behind here that the battery rests in. Your starter should be instructed never to turn this off. That's our opinion so that there's no mistake that if he forgets to turn it back on, there won't be a missed start that can cause lots of, lots of issues. So just leave it on and uh, change it every, every two, three track meets. This light will dim as the battery weakens, but you may not notice it in the bright sunlight. It will also weaken the uh, signal being sent if it is a weak battery. That's why you should always have some fresh batteries on hand and change it out every two or three track meets, certainly every year. Let's go to the, the receiver unit, let's plug it in. It turns on with a, um, a plug-in of the power source. We have confirmation that it is on. And it also has an antenna that's in the upright position. You can move this up, you should, so that it points to the sky or to the ceiling, and then it's not pointed out a window. These anten antennas are omnidirectional. They uh, emit a signal and look for a signal in all directions. Again, they don't have to, nor should they be pointed. Um, you can do a, t uh, a shake test if you're having issues that you might think is related to your antenna. Take it off, shake it. If you hear a vibration, that means that something may be loose or broken in there and your issues could be traced to a broken antenna. All right, so one of the first things you wanna do once you've got this plugged in is to make sure that there's a transmission. I'm gonna simply tap the unit and I'm gonna get a confirmation data light that lights up. I don't have to set off a gun, I don't have to blow in the sensor, I just simply tap it and we see a transmission happening. If for some reason you don't get these two to talk, there is a learn button on the front that if depressed will allow you to repair the unit. Just simply trigger the uh, transmitter while the green light is flashing and it will reestablish that connection. Now you may not, not ever have to do that, but that is an easy troubleshooting piece if they're not detecting one another. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in the audio cable. This is going to transfer the, the impulse into the computer and the other end goes into a USB audio device. I've got a couple styles here. Um, you may have something different, but they're all the same uh, function. You can buy these online. You do get a couple of these with your system um, and they're relatively inexpensive. So make sure that you plug into the pink or red mic port and not the green headphone port, okay? That would be a problem. You won't get any detection uh, into your software. Okay, the red pink port there. Once we have this, we wanna plug it into a working USB port, sometimes it's not detected. Make sure that port is working. Maybe move a mouse around if you need to. And we'll open up the Eagle Eye Pro Timing software. To finish this entire setup, we wanna make sure in the race trigger tab that we've selected 
from the drop down menu, the device menu, the USB audio device. By mistake, we could be selecting the internal microphone, in which case you will trigger the system by uh, a voice, by uh, commotion in the press box uh, near the timers table, and you, you, you may not wonder or know why. Um, make sure that it's on the USB audio device so that when you trigger it, and we're going to arm right now with control F12, we know that we're not setting it off with a clap, but that it is connected, and there we go, with the USB audio device. Now you can also arm the system with this button inside the race trigger tab that says arm. Okay, If for whatever reason you're not on the right device, you have to make sure that you stop arming, unclick it, and then stop monitoring. And then that, that now allows you to change your um, device to the USB audio device if it wasn't selected. A lot of times people try, they can't get a detection and don't realize that they still have the monitoring button activated and you have to stop monitoring before it allows you to change it. We do recommend that you um, use control F12 to arm the system. That minimizes your time inside of this race trigger tab and then you can spend your time in the race results tab. But again, you can use the arm button or control F12. There is a threshold here meter. You really don't need to mess with that. Okay, um, You can uh, move up and down the level of threshold that will trigger, but it's set at the 50% and you can generally just leave it there. All right, we've got the transmitter, the receiver, we've got good connections, we've got antennas in the right place, we've got a fresh battery, we've got uh, good connections all the way into the computer, and we've got the USB audio device selected. One more item, make sure that you're using the right st uh, starting shell, and almost always you want to use a 32 caliber shell in a 32 caliber gun. That's going to give you a big bang. Outdoor track meets need a big start. Um, starting shell so that there's a fair start for everyone rather than a small practice crimp. So if you're getting uh, a good detection but every once in a while you miss one, it could be that you're using the wrong shells and a 22 uh, practice crimp will not trigger the system consistently. A 32 shell will. This is an Eagle Eye shell that has um, been around for, for decades. It's our own proprietary casing. It's not copper and or brass, I should say, it's not brass, and it's less expensive than traditional other uh, starting uh, shells like Winchester's. You can use any brand you'd like, um, but certainly go for the 32. You can get away with the 22 long um, indoors as well, but really the 32 is best. Here's a unique shell from uh, Eagle Eye as well. This is the powderless, so it's got a 32 caliber size. There's no powder in it, and it's got a primer. This is ideal for indoor. And now you've got an indoor small bang, a big bang, and you only need one gun. Okay, so if you have questions about your trigger system, refer this video for some troubleshooting items. If you still have some issues, email us at support at eagleeye, uh, track .com, and we're glad to help you out. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.